An Immigrant Story After Ellis Island. My family, like so many Jews fleeing persecution and harm, arrived in the U.S. scarred and having survived trauma. This was the early 1900s. I can imagine their enormous relief and gratitude to arrive in the United States and gratitude to arrive in the United States and be allowed to stay. Of course, my grandparents would likely have been killed in the Shoah if they had not made it to the U.S. Possibly, too, they would not have made it alive through the Eastern Europe pogroms before that. By the time my mother was born, her parents had been in the U.S. for a few years. They were extremely poor, yet they were still very grateful to be here. America was a safe haven for them. As early to mid-1900s, America had its challenges, the depression, prejudice, discrimination. However, like human beings, no nation is perfect, and America was a beacon of safety, freedom, and hope for mine and so many families. My mother's father worked for a jeweler earning very My mother's father worked for a jeweler earning very meager wages. My mom would tell me how they ate potatoes for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and how her mother would cut a hole in the top and bottom of the potato sacks, sew a few seams, and those would be her dresses. I could tell she was ashamed of these stories. I don't know many of their struggles, both practical and emotional. I do know the great fear my mom carried. Fear of becoming a victim of violence. When I look back on her life, I can only imagine how absolutely terrifying and bone chilling, not to mention devastatingly sad, it must have been to learn that six million Jewish people, plus countless people of other faiths, had been systematically murdered. Not 70 plus years ago, but to there now. Add to that learning of the goal to wipe every single Jewish woman, man, and child off the face of the earth? I cannot imagine. This is what my mother and father and yours woke to. How does anyone make sense of that? Continue to believe in God, have hope, and feel safe in the world. On the psyches of these millions of American Jews and their immigrated parents, what effect did the learning of this Holocaust have? It's mind-boggling now, over 70 years later, how mind-numbing it must have been on the ground. Keep in mind, there was no Israel to which to go. Israel as a country did not yet exist. Today, we have myriads of therapies, PTSD resources, mental health workshops, life coaching, etc. Then, what did they have? Very little. So, this generation soldiered on. They went to school and worked the next day. They did what they had to do to function and not lose their minds. As an adult, my mother, while vibrant and funny, really, really funny, was very afraid. She would warn me against strangers stopping me on the streets, tell me to run screaming into the street if a stranger approached. She'd read me stories from the newspaper of bad things happening to people, tell me that everyone hates the Jews, and most pointedly, she would tell me that God hated the Jews. I am so unsure if I will reveal this part. If you are hearing it, then I did. She'd referred to the Holocaust and a God that allowed it to happen. This thought must have reverberated through millions of Jewish people's minds then and now. When I think back to her warnings and in many ways her hopeless outlook, I can empathize with how she might have reached this point. And yet, she married. She had children. She continued life. And though she seemed to lose faith in God, she chose life. She continued to hold a strong Jewish identity. 
As hopeless as she might have felt about God, she continued the life cycle. Now, here we are. Had my grandparents stayed in Russia, my mom might never have been. Had my mom chosen not to bring children into the world, I would not be here. As for me now, a mom of two awesome young men, the rubber meets the road. I cannot imagine this world without my two sons. I am biased, but I know they bring something irreplaceably spectacular to this world, as we all do. And they would not be here if... Thank you, Mom. Lastly, thank you, allies, for risking and giving up your lives, for saving us. Thank you, soldiers at Normandy, who rushed into enemy fire, knowing many would lose their lives, and did. Thank you to all the soldiers and veterans fighting for freedom and goodness. We would be lost without you. Most especially, thank you to God. How can I trust and thank God? I discuss that throughout my writing. It's taken a lot of work to get here. Now I am here with everything I have. Love, Phoebe.